Welcome to the review of the AA Final. As we continue our series of the State Finals review. We're going to start this one off a little bit different than I normally do. I normally try to go in order of the game, like chronological order of the game. Uh, but I'll still try to group, you know, all the holdings in the one. Um, blocking the back, whatever. Try to group the fouls or topics all in the one. But still stay in kind of chronological order. Starting a little bit differently with this one. We're going to start with one of the last few plays of the game. Mainly because I read the analytics. I know that most of you don't watch the entire video. So I don't want to bury this one at the end. This is an important play we all need to look at. Um, so I'm bringing it toward the beginning. I'm giving the GPV feed. I normally try to keep it the huddle feed. But I'm going to give the GPV feed because it gives us the best look at it. So, uh, you can't see it. This is fourth quarter, 15 seconds left in the game. The white team is down by five, so they're they're driving here. So they get the first down. We'll stop the clock. We got a first down. I also have a flag. I cut some of it, but there was a pretty lengthy discussion among the officials. So now we get the call. So we got a little participation. Defense penalty has declined. First down, as a result of the play, is the first down. You can't see it, but there's nine seconds left on the clock. Watch the referee. And we are going to wind it. So, all of this is right. All right. We got declined penalty. Clock will stop with the first down. Declined the penalty. So, we're going to roll the clock. Here's the issue. So we had a new rule instituted a couple of years ago. It is rule 347. When a penalty is accepted with less than two minutes remaining in either half, the offended team will have the option to start the clock, the game clock, on the snap. All right, so we are under two minutes at the end of the second half. The offended team is the team driving. They're down by five, so their time is of the essence here. So they would have the option to start the game clock on the snap however the penalty was declined so that option is off the table you don't get you know you can't decline the penalty in the yardage but keep that option of the time that's what something you can do so at the base level everything was done correctly here the the play was officiated correctly the penalty was enforced correctly all that is fine I just want to keep in mind here, first of all, I do want to touch on, they can't decline the penalty and keep the clock option. They have to take it all. Take the penalty and the yardage and the clock option or decline it all. I just, I have to wonder if the white team was given the option here. Because it seems to me if they were correctly given the option, they would have taken the penalty and the clock. Because we see, because remember, remember, illegal participation is a 15-yard penalty. So they gain 11, 12 yards on it. So they get three more yards plus the option to start the clock on the snap. All right. I just want to go over that and reiterate that it's important in a game like this, really any game, when you have a situation like that, I would advise a white hat to go over, make sure to wing or deep or both are over there with you. Go over and explain those options thoroughly to the coach. Tell the coach, this is your options. You can take the penalty and the option to start the clock on the snap. Or if you decline the penalty, you lose that option. And the clock's going to start on the ready. And then if you go tell that coach, you got to go tell the other coach. You have to tell them both. Well, just make sure they both are aware of what happened. So that's what I would do in this situation. That's what I advise. Because, I mean, I'm not saying they weren't given the option. It's just odd to me that had they been explained the options thoroughly and correctly, it seems like the offense would have taken the penalty and the clock rather than the client at all. So it just struck me as odd. And I just want to use this as a learning tool right now to kind of one go over 347 because it's one of those. It's so new, I think we still forget it a lot of times. And just kind of touch on the importance of talking to coaches and explaining to them their options. You know, it doesn't have to be the last 10 seconds of a state final. It could be a regular season game. 
any game, preseason, scrimmage, whatever. So make sure we're make sure in a situation like this, when the coach's options could you know influence the game or are not as uh, assumed, not as easy to make. Make sure they have those options because if we forget that they have the option to start on the snap, uh, chances are coaches forgot it too. So make sure we're explaining to these coaches. And I would say that's on the white hat to go over there and do it. And then, like I said, make sure the line judge or deep or both are over there with him and explain it to him. And then go tell the other coach. So that's all on that play. Moving on. Let's look at this opening kickoff. So before we start, let's talk about our normal on a normal kick. Crew of seven. You know, we have our lanes of responsibility now. Normal kick. So he's going to go down the middle of the field. Deep. The side judge is going to take sideline to about in between the numbers and the hash marks. Umpire would take between the hash marks and the numbers to about the middle of the field. Bad judge is going to take the middle of the field to about these, right between these hash marks and numbers. And Phil just going to take between the hash marks and numbers all the way over. But those can change based on the kick. So here we're going to have a kick. We're going to have a short kick to one side. So now all of our lane responsibility are going to change. We're going to have the uh, wing is going to take about. He'll come up and take probably to about. I would say 30, 35, and all in this side zone. And then the side judge will take to about 30, 35 in this side zone. Because that includes the ball carrier. So maybe the umpire kind of narrows his down, and he takes probably between the hash and the numbers all the way down to about 30 or 35. The back judge, you're going to take the middle of the field. So we have a hold here about the 42. You can see it start to develop right there. Take down hold that goes unflagged. Does it have an effect on the play? Maybe, maybe not. It's not a point of attack, but it's close enough to the play and it's out in the middle of the field. We need to we need to call that. So that is probably in this situation that would be the back judge. As he's coming in here, he's going to take the middle of the field, and he should have a have good angle on it. Um, as you see, the umpire's coming in already. But, like we said before, I mean, the umpire, he may can widen his vision up a little bit and see this, but if he's got some stuff going on in his area, he's going to be focused on that. So this would be the back judge would come in and pick this up in the middle of the field. All right, so we're gonna have reverse mechanics here. Watch, watch uh, right here around the ten. We're gonna have a good call for blocking the back right there. It's not much, but remember, blocking the back as a, especially as a safety foul, you don't have to have the hard shove or hard hit. You know, a little blow up hit in the back. Just any kind of any kind of contact in the back that displaces this defender. And puts him out of position to make the play. So you see he's right there. He's going to be in position to at least make a play on this. And then he just gets ran to the back. And knocks him out of position. So this is a good call for blocking the back. And wings, short and a short return like this. When we have reverse mechanics, you just do what you can. There's not a whole lot we can do here. Um, so just do what you can to get downfield. And even if you're close to the play like that, when the ball or the ball the play ends, uh, we're still gonna have the deep come up and grab that. He's still gonna grab the spot on that particular play. That's not really how good block in the back by the by the referee. Good job, referee, uh, picking up some peripheral there. Anytime we have a reverse of field, we want our. We want our radars to go up a little bit. That's where we're going to have 
a lot of plays like this. So we'll have blindside blocks. Um, we can have a block in the backs. Any kind of blow up, illegal blow up hits like that. Also, good job. See the line judge signal it back. Good job there. Just well officiated play all around right here. Here we're gonna have reverse mechanics again. We're gonna have a good call for an illegal blindside block. It's just like always when we reverse the field, we're gonna have I mean have our radars up and here we have it. You can see it, you can see it start to materialize where it even happens. And if we're in a good position which we should already be in a good position with our wings and our deeps since it was kind of a deep reverse mechanic then the wings should be able to pick this up if you're backpedaling or watching the play if not I'm probably going to pick it up too as well but well, you could all, you could almost have a block in the back there uh that may be a block in the back block in the back blindside block you, if the block is in the back, you can go with the blindside block if it's a forceful hit. Um, the the first blindside block on that verse can we saw earlier, that wouldn't be a forceful hit. If you do have a block in the back that you think rises to the level of forceful hit, you can go with blindside block. So that one we, we could support blindside block as well. Uh, one thing too I would say is that as a deep wing, uh, don't come up so don't be so quick to come up and follow. We we want to trail a good distance back. Uh, don't be in such a hurry to come up. You don't want to get too boxed in the play. It winds up being a good distance back. Uh, as you will point out there, we don't want to be in too big of a hurry. And see, good job, wing there. He threw the flag, kept officiating. Good job again. I would say just like before, and I don't know if he did or not. But even with the wing right there where the play ends, we still want to let the deep come behind and get that spot. This is just a good example. I'm watching the line judge. He did this the whole game. I just want to show a good example of it. Just a good example of communication. Got punches it forward. And he had a good signal pre-snap. And just good job. See how he gave up the gave up some ground, let the play get in front of him. Uh, just a good job overall by the wing right there, the line judge. That I just wanted to point out. This is ah, this is just a good example of a good pump play. I just wanted to show. We don't if, when the ball is dead, no one's coming up to it. Uh, it's a good job there of the back judge. He's kind of, the receiver kind of feigned like he was going to play at it and then backed away. Line judge did a good job of coming up when he thought there may be a play on the ball. Once we kind of realize there's not going to be a play on the ball. It's just good, uh, good hustle, good pace coming up there. You don't want to be too quick to get up there and grab the spot. We don't want to be too slow either. This is just a really good pace that they set right here. Uh, just, I, thought, I just thought it was a well-officiated punt play. Okay, so this play got a lot of traction. Um, a lot of people thought this maybe should have been a touchdown so here's the thing about this and, and I even looked at the GPV version and I didn't see anything else really definitive but what I want to sh I just so here there's two sides of this coin I've heard people say you know looks like half his body got over the goal line so surely he had a touchdown and common sense would probably tell you yeah but I'm not going to sit here and say and tell official if you don't see the ball cross the goal line, signal it anyway. Just guess. That's not, that's not what we really want to do. 
We want to do it. We want to put ourselves in a position where we can see the ball. And sometimes you just can't. Um, that's why a lot of times we like to have the umpire help out in these situations. But sometimes the umpire can't help out in this situation. So I think it was just a I think it was just kind of a perfect storm of events. Because the the wings can't get any better position. Umpire really can't get any better position. Sometimes you're just blocked out. Um, and I mean, I, I I get the argument. You know, you see half his body go to the goal line. So surely, I don't know, maybe it did. So I'm not going to sit here and say, if you don't see it, then, you know, call it anyway. No, if you don't see the ball go to the goal line, don't call it. You know, don't, don't guess. Um, the, we don't want to get in the habit of just being like, well, I mean, it probably did. We just don't want to do that. So, you know, I'm, I think, I don't think there's anything else the officials could have done here. All right. We see it a lot. We always hear us say it. Onside kick situations. Uh, we're going to, we're onside kicks, sh really short kicks. Anytime with the kicking team trying to get the ball back in a short kick situation, especially onside kick, we're going to treat that ball, the for the K or string line, as a plane. And you can see here, before the ball is kicked, this guy is way over. Regular kick, deep kick down the middle of the field. Probably going to let this go because his foot's not going to be over. No, we're letting that go. Deep kick down the field. Onside kick, though. Clearly bad, clearly off, and the officials got it right. This is the very next play. You can see we are, we are, we are five yards further back. So the the thing about this one though is it's hard to tell if there's four on his side right here. Um, that is the R's call. He's the one that makes that call. It looks like he is probably. On his side of the kick, on his side of the kicker. So, we're always gonna, and we're always gonna err on the side of caution there. That's gonna be one of those make it legal if you can. So if they're you know on the same plane, then we're just gonna deem him as four side, as four on that side. So, good, good job there. All right, that's it for the double A final. Um, well officiated game, I thought. Uh, like I said, the only the only issue kind of had maybe this last the last few seconds, but I thought it was a well officiated game. Kudos to the crew. Uh, a lot we can learn from this game, and hope we did learn a lot. So we'll see you next week with either may do a special video. We may roll right into the three A.